Hey everybody, welcome to the How to Draw Cards video series presented by the Online Academy of Automotive Design. My name is Michael, and today we're going to do something a little bit different than a lot of the videos you see on YouTube about drawing cars. I'm going to do an overlay demo where I'll be drawing over a student work and offering insight into how to improve both the design and the drawing technique. If you think you'd be interested in this kind of personal one-on-one -on -one tutoring, check out howtodrawcars.net for more information about the program. Now let's have a look at the drawing. The drawing was set in by a high school student named Barry who wants to become a professional car designer. Looking at the design, I really like the gesture. It has a nice cab forward movement combined with this unique DLO, which is the daylight opening or the shape of the side glass. A fast B pillar and a low nose. The problem I see with the design is that the lower really doesn't match the newness of the upper. I want to keep and build on these fender flares and do something in the demo that really connects the lower and upper together. Moving on to the drawing, I think it really looks flat. A car design drawing, even a side view, should be three-dimensional. I'm going to show you six ways to improve your drawings so they'll look more three-dimensional. Let's get the demo started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put it on a ground plane. A lot of people don't use ground planes anymore. It's, to leave it out is, you know, pretty advanced. You've got to see it in your head and to know that to leave it out. Um, either way is fine. Again, it's just what works. There's no right and wrong. Um, the second thing on the car is that the wheelbase is really short. It's about two and a half wheels long. And typically on a pickup truck, I would say that that's way too short. You need to stretch it out. But since this is a youthful, compact, sporty truck, I think that it's okay. Let's, let's see what we can get out of it you know, what we can do with it, given the fact that the wheelbase is so short. So I'll just put in my initial lines here that, uh, and again, I'm drawing from my shoulder. I'm not scribbling along, scratching away at the paper. Um, trying to get in the main sort of body lines, this fast V pillar that Barry's come up with is really nice. And the angle on the bed, which really drives the design forward. And then we'll get into Again, the, the key area that I want to make with this, key points I want to make with this sketch is how to get the, vi the vehicle to look more three-dimensional. And here's the first area, it's the windshield wrap. Barry's drawing, the windshield is basically a flat plane. Now you can have it like that, it's very rare, um, but for most vehicles, most vehicles have some sort of wrap in the windshield and for the sake of our demonstration, let's do that. Let's put some wrap in the windshield. So here's the A pillar, and it comes down in a touchdown point of the A pillar and a touchdown point of the windshield. And there's an offset there, and we'll talk more about offset in a little while. The next thing we're going to want to do is put in this very fast, interesting DLO, daylight opening, which is a side glass shape that Barry's come up with. And let's draw in that seat that Barry has in there too, because that's going to be important as well to getting us to a more three-dimensional design. Here's the instrument panel. And then we're gonna draw in the sod glass environmental reflection or ground reflection. And I'm gonna let that go into the B pillar as well. And we'll come back to that. Now, hood coming into the front end. So the first area of three-dimensionality that we added was the windshield wrap and the sod glass transparency. Coming down to the hood, You've got two things in play here. One is the edge of the vehicle here, the nose. If we draw a straight line up and we draw a straight line back, let's say theoretically this is the center line of the vehicle, right? And this is the edge of the vehicle. Now within this area, is going to be the headlight and the grill and all those details. And what we want to do is put those in there. Barry did not put any of those in as part of his design. So we're going to add those in. Just some detail. Now, what we did is we created what is in essence a plan view. And a plan view basically just means top view, right? So here's the tip of the nose. And plan views usually have some sort of curvature or wrap or a sweep, which is an automotive term. And so you sweep this around 
and you get to this point out here, and that's where my headlight is. See that? So you've in, if you took this top view and you turned it on its side, you would have this side view. Now, if that doesn't make any sense, let me know. Please ask in the, in the uh, comment section. I'll get back to you on, on trying to clear that up or maybe do some more videos on it if that's something that uh, is a mystery and you'd like some more clarification on that. But that's a very important concept that you're drawing the vehicle a three-dimensional vehicle, in essence, where this is a one-point perspective, but you're going to see all of these details even though it's just a side view. So let's get, put in our uh, front door cut and maybe add a step in here. And then this lower that we said was kind of dated, let's do something fun with that. And add a little bit of a light catcher that will and then allow a lead in for the wheel flare and throw in the back of our bed here and our step bumper okay so just like we did in the front view front end here we do the same thing in the rear now typically pickup trucks are pretty square in the back and so they don't have a lot of sweep but again, for our drawing, for the sake of trying to educate about three-dimensionality and getting three-dimensionality in our drawings, let's say that the taillight starts here and there's an offset. So if I come around that point in space where this vertical line touches that point, that is going to be the edge of my taillight. I'm going to put my taillight in there. And I'll throw some other wind splint in there. Or actually the first wind splint because here was the second one. All right. So again, all of a sudden, what was in essence a pretty flat vehicle turned, starting to turn into a very three-dimensional design. The next thing is because this is in essence a one-point perspective, what we want to do is see the tires that are on the passenger side. We want to look through the ground area under the truck and see the other tires. And that's going to give the the drawing a sense of depth. And the last thing we're gonna do is if you take your center point of your axle, which Barry got just right spot on, we wanna move those inboard a bit. So instead of it being here, we're gonna move it here. And what that's gonna do is gonna make the wheels look a lot more three-dimensional. It's gonna give the rims that big, you know, deep dish kind of just more aggressive look. It's going to make them look a lot more aggressive. And it's going to allow the vehicle, the, the drawing, not, not the vehicle, but the vehicle, but the drawing of the vehicle to appear a lot more three-dimensional. It's going to make the person who's viewing the drawing understand that you understand that this thing is a three-dimensional object in space and that and that your eye and, and the way that you've handled these details, that person knows that you know that that's what this is. So here's our A-pillar wrap, and here's our ground or environmental reflection in our glass. And what happens when you get an environmental reflection in the glass is that you get a very hard line that gets lighter and more transparent as you come away from that line, typically. And again, there's no right and wrong in this, it's just whatever works. So you can look at this and say, oh yeah, I get it, I see that, that looks cool. Or you can look at it and say, mm, you know what, I don't think that really works for me, and figure out a way to do it better. I mean, that's, that's what's great thing about car design and car design drawings is that there's no right and wrong, it's just what works and what, and what doesn't work. And if one thing works better than another, then use the thing that works better. So because of the, the environmental reflection on the glass, you can see the seat through the window, and you can see a bit of the steering wheel and you can see the seat on the other side. And all of a sudden, what you're trying to draw is the volume, the volume that's contained inside the vehicle, inside the upper part of the vehicle where the passengers are gonna sit, where the driver's gonna sit. You wanna to try to capture that in your sketch, that that's a real thing in space, that that's a volume in space. Now, sky reflections, which are what's above the ground reflection, is typically in this area, and that's usually a lot softer, so I'm just gonna soften that up a little bit. 
and we'll see if we get, you know, we get some more, uh, we get that to work as far as a sky and a, and a ground reflection. So there's our glass. And there's our wrap on the windshield. Okay, so let's take a look at the original and we can compare what we started with to what we have. The original drawing, we wanted to tie together the upper and the lower. The lower didn't really have the dynamic design content that, say, the upper had. And then the drawing was a little flat. It, it lacked a certain sense of volume. It looked, lacked a certain sense of three-dimensionality. So for the demo, we added this light catcher in at the bottom and we tied the fender flares together, which allowed the upper and the lower to have more of a, bit of more of a connected relationship. The next thing we did on the drawing side was we added those elements that gave the design more three-dimensional look. We wrapped the windshield and we enhanced that upper volume by allowing a side glass reflection to let us see inside the vehicle. The next thing we did was we took this theoretical center line from the top view and we added some sweep to the front end that allowed us to see some of these front end details. Same thing in the rear. We added some sweep to the rear and this allowed us to see the taillight and the tailgate and some of the details that gave the car, again, the truck, a more volumetric feel in the drawing in two dimensions. The next thing we did was we added the passenger side wheels that we see as part of the one point perspective because we're looking back into space and these start to creep in and give us a sense of, of space under the truck. The last thing we did was we moved the center point of our driver's side, the ones we see in the foreground, we move those center points of the axles inboard a bit, and that gave the rims a great sense of depth. It really allowed us to add some drama and, and bring out the sense of three-dimensionality in, in, the, in the, the sketch. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. Please like and subscribe as more videos will be added soon. And be sure to check out the howtodrawcars.net program. And overall, thanks for watching.